Hello. Some time ago I did a presentation on the words for praise and worship and just lately I realized that not all of the PowerPoint made it into the presentation, possibly because it was just too long. So I want to add a few Hebrew word roots to help give us understanding to praise and worship. One of these words is shir. Shir means song. Exodus 15 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Jehovah and spake, saying, I will sing unto Jehovah, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he hath thrown into the sea. Psalm 13, 6. I will sing unto Jehovah, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Psalm 96, 1. Oh, sing unto Jehovah a new song. Sing unto Jehovah all the earth. Psalm 65, verse 13. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys are also covered with corn. They shout for joy. They sing. And an example of the power of praise and worship, singing from Second Chronicles 20, starting in verse 19. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise Jehovah, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto Jehovah, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise Jehovah, for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, Jehovah set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Here is a hollow verb, which comes from a root, sharar, which means to twist or twine like a rope. It's related to nerves and sinews and even a chain. It means to be firm or hard, especially in a bad sense, like shrirut lev, which means obstinacy, a hardness of heart. Also to press together, from Deuteronomy 29:19, And it come to pass, when he hears the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. There is nowhere in the Bible where imagination is a good thing. It is always a negative connotation. This person is weaving, twisting some ideas to his own mind. In Job, we see the sense of the navel. Job 40, 16. Lo now, his strength is in his loins and his force is in the navel of his belly. In modern Hebrew, we still see this word shrir means muscle. So it's something kind of tight and strong and wound. A related root, Shirah, Numbers 6.3, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, speaking of the Nazarite, and shall drink no vinegar or wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. So the idea of liquor is something that's strong and concentrated. Similarly, in 1 Samuel 17.5, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, something, again, concentrated and strong. You can make a rope by twisting it. If two people stand at either end of a string, and they both turn in the same direction. If they bring the ends of the string together, the string will automatically wrap itself around itself, and this is the concept. And the idea of a strong cord is important, we see in Ecclesiastes 4.12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. The other root, which I wanted to include in this presentation, is the root for zamar, which also means to sing. Judges 5.3. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto Jehovah. I will sing praise to Jehovah, God of Israel. From 2 Samuel 22:50. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Jehovah, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. This root zamar is where we get the word mizmor. The book of Psalms is called Tehillim, praises, but each single psalm is called mizmor. Psalm 3, one, the Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. Yehovah, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Psalm 48.1, a song, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Great is Yehovah and greatly to be praised 
in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Zamar has an apparently completely different meaning, which means to prune in caring for certain agricultural products. We need to trim back parts of it to help the plant increase. Leviticus 25.3 Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for Jehovah. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. A very well-known verse, Isaiah 2.4 And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke any people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. The word is mazmerot. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. In Joel 3.10, Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. In Genesis 43.11, we see a different translation. And their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so, now do this. Take of the best fruits, that is, that which is plucked in the land, in your vessels, and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds. So this is how these two words are related, singing and pruning, by the concept of having a tight chord. All your string instruments, guitar and violin and piano, are all played by causing a tightened string to vibrate, and that's what makes the sound. So the idea of plucking, the same action that you would use to pull an apple off a tree, you pluck that string. And interestingly, speaking of chords, the organs in your throat that make sounds are called vocal cords. They're chords. So there's a relationship spiritually of the pruning and the worship. In John 3.30, John said, He must increase, but I must decrease. So something must be plucked and pruned from us. We're constantly in a state of being pruned. Colossians 2.10 and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. When we worship, it says we bring a sacrifice, the praise of our lips. We must take something valuable from ourself and lay that down in order to worship and to praise the Lord. John 15.1 I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So pruned if you do, and pruned if you don't. I hope this is of some value to you. I will put the link to the first part of this presentation in the notes. And until next time, Tasimita Inayim, Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.